And we are now joined by Bowling Green head coach Todd Simon. Todd, I'm going to give you a little factoid here. I don't know if you know this. Bowling Green last year was one of 10 teams in America to go from 20 losses to 20 wins. It was your first season as a head coach of Bowling Green, and you had nine new guys. Uh, as the saying goes, it's the hope that kills you. Are you setting the bar too high for yourself as a coach? Are you giving yourself too much expectation for what you're going to be able to get done here this season? Uh, yeah, uh, well, hopefully not. Hopefully uh, that's the standard, you know, is our, is our hope. Obviously, uh, uh, we, were, we were excited to be able to kind of get kind of that winning expectation in place, get that culture kind of going last year, kind of excited the fan base. I think we won nine or 10 in a row at one point. And, and uh, so it was good to kind of get the uh, fans trust back and, and get them filling the uh, Stroh center, which was a great environment, but, uh, but yeah, that bar is high. And, and at this stage of my career, I, d I don't want to lower that bar anymore. I've, I've stubbed my toe on a bar a few, a few times. And I don't want to do that again. <laughs> You know, you lost a couple of key players, uh, your top two scores, but you bring a, a decent amount back, and then you went to the portal like most mid-major programs, well, every program right now uh, these days, and, and got four guys uh, D1 transfers, including a kid from Michigan that uh, I know a lot of people were high on when he came over to Ann Arbor from Lebanon, Yusuf Kayat. Uh, tell me a little bit more about some of these transfers and what you expect from from these four guys, how important they're going to be to being able to hopefully take you to that even next level. Yeah, you know, we, you know, the key was to have having the retention of some very key, you know, rotation, uh, you know, guys that that that'll, that'll provide and, and give our stability of the culture. Um, so that that's really started us off. We've got great leadership. Uh, Trey Thomas, Sam Towns, Dejon Humphrey, Greg Spurs. These guys have provided great leadership of, of what the expectation is. But, but then you go in the portal, and, and, and this is speeding up their process. Obviously, Yo-Yo uh, Kayat, you know, he had a fantastic summer. Um, we know, you know, Braylon Green, we another guy that we knew when he was young. Um and uh, didn't get a lot of time at Arizona State, and now he's got a kind of kind of a chance to to reinvent himself here. And he's had a he's had a good experience so far. And Derek Butler is a double digit established player in our league. You know, we know what he is. He he gave us fits when we played him, and 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 we got a chance to to add him to our our back. You know, now we've got a couple double digit scores in the backcourt in the MAC. You know, which is you know we feel really good good about. And then. Uh, you know, Will Exact comes from uh, uh, Utah. You know, he's just different. You know, he's 6'6", 235, 240 as a guard. You know, he can sit down guard one through five. He's super, super talented. He was coming off of an injury last year, and, and he's dynamic. And and, and a fifth guy, uh, Marcus Johnson, who transferred from Division Two Wheeling, uh, is just one of the most unique players in, in, in Division One basketball this year. He's 6'7" you know, pushing up towards, you know, 290, 300 and, and <laughs> shoots 45 from three and 90 from the free throw line. He's like a, he's just a big point guard that you have to reimagine when you watch him. So, uh, so, so we feel really good about the, that group of guys uh, that be impact transfers. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about Marcus because um, it feels like that's the kind of player where if you get creative, you can you can really have someone that's going to be effective on your hands because a lot of teams aren't used to seeing a guy that's his height, his size, with his shooting ability and that kind of skill set. Yeah, and for how we play, uh, last year we had to, you know, make the decision to, uh, you know, figure out a different playing style because we couldn't shoot. You know, and we've been a hallmark of ours has been we've been in elite offensive teams at, at our previous stop and tempo and, and trying to be toward the top of the nation in scoring. And and we didn't have much shooting. So, you know, it's particularly the big spots. We, we like to have five threats on the floor, him and Preston Squire uh, give us two really, really lethal fives from from the arc. And uh, both those guys at Magic will be over 40 from three. So it changes your schemes. You're going to have to be very um, intentional in how, how you guard these guys. Otherwise, you know, our first game in, in Europe, you know, we played against some couple good teams. And, you know, they got 11 threes up between the two of them and made five and, and changed all the coverages for, the, for our opponent. So it, they're unique. Um, 
We'll move them all over the floor. We'll use them in different ways. We'll, they'll be in ball screens as handlers, as shooters. Uh, it's, it's, it's a unique way to play, and we're excited to be able to do it. Yeah, so you mentioned you went to Europe this past summer uh, in early August. You went to Germany, Czech Republic. Um, I got two things for you. All right, one's going to be easy. The first one is just going to be give me the, the, the thing you learned about your team. Give me the, the number one thing that you learned about your team on this trip that you did not know coming in. And then number two, it's going to be a little more difficult for you. <laughs> well, number one, uh, you know, we, we had some good good opponents. Um, so we, we were not sure what to expect, didn't do a whole lot of prep going into it. And uh, both ended up being very good teams, very good environments. But what I learned is we have another gear competitively and when 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 we needed to turn it on we could you know we could get many stops we're much more athletic much longer much better defensively um just you know with better depth right now so when we needed to we had about 10 different guys that we could go to that to, to impact the game in that competitiveness showed and that depth showed in those games are you nervous about the next part yeah, you got me. You got me nervous. <laughs> Good. Doster loves when I get coaches squirming a little bit. All right. So <laughs> when you take these guys on these trips, it's not just about on the court. It's about educational, you know, and, and that's important. Right. We retain. We go places and they learn things. Well, I want to see how much you learned about this trip. And you went to the Prague Castle. And uh, I'm going to hit you with three questions about the Prague Castle, and we're going to see how much you retain from your trip. <laughs> Which century was it founded, Todd Simon? I'm going to say 10th century. Close. You're close. Ninth. Is That's it? not bad. That's not bad. I was, I was in the You're ballpark. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> who, the ballpark? who founded the castle, Todd? Who oh, founded gosh. the castle? John C. Prague? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. <laughs> Ferdinand <laughs> I. Habsburg. Uh, the castle was that. actually started. This is interesting. I read about it a little bit, did my research. Uh, the castle was started in 1344. Then it was paused mm. in 1419. Why? In hmm. I'm going to say a war. <laughs> Look at this. The Who Sight Wars. Wow. Yes. Todd, I'm impressed. I, I put the phone down maybe for a few minutes of the tour, I think. It was us dialed in. <laughs> you were paying attention. Good job. All right, back. get it back to basketball, Rob. What do we got? Well, I, I was just going to ask you, when you have this many new faces, um, what, how valuable are those? You know, you get the extra practices. You get that kind of team bonding experience. You get to go out and hang out and learn about castles when you're in uh, the Czech Republic. Um, how, how, how valuable was kind of just that time together? I mean, it could, 100 out of 100 value. I mean, it just was absolutely spectacular. I mean, you have 10 new faces, you, like you said, and, and, and uh, those 10 practices were a grind. We made it very difficult. Um, there were long days, and, uh, and we really had every, as much in as possible. So our deal was we might not be able to, ha to replicate the experience of, of playing together and all that stuff, but we can try to fast forward our, our timeline. So here on October 1, we have everything in and, and rehearsed and worked on and, and, and really could play a game tomorrow, and, and a lot of that is attributed to the summer. But uh, now, so now for the next month, we're refining stuff. We're getting stuff kind of drilled down, a little dialed in, figuring out roles and rotations and all that sort of stuff. So it was a big deal for us. But uh, off the floor, uh, and especially the how we did this, you had a, a chance to get everyone spending a lot of time together. They had a lot, of, you know, a lot of free time to do some some exploring and and get with different roommates and and all that sort of thing. So I thought it was absolutely. Uh, invaluable in terms of guys just kind of getting relationships built last thing i got for you trey thomas we're going to hear from him here in a second um he's a senior he was a little bit banged up last year so i had a pretty good season what are you expecting to see from him and what kind of steps do you need him to take as a player yeah i mean we've we've talked all along it's it's, it's 
he he had a spectacular off season last year. Got banged up before the season, and uh, he's made a leap as a leader. You know, his voice is is very impactful right now. Uh, you know, he's just doing everything right. He's leading by example. He, he's the guy that's getting the extra shots when you're checking in the gym. He's the guy that's uh, guys are looking to for answers, and uh, and he's answered every single you know thing that we've added onto his plate he, he's been able to absolutely uh you know it, it, embrace it and, and so his buy-in um he's growing his game he's not the same player he was in in the spring and that's been something very important for us is that guys don't come back the same player he's not the same player he's stronger he, he's he's playing off a of two now he's explosive his quickness is back from the injury and, and, and shooting at a high rate. And so, you know, he, he's, he's going to have a spectacular year. Well, Todd, listen, we appreciate you being here, man. You got a B plus in the field of 68 European history <laughs> exam on the other side of the break. We're going to make Todd do his multiplication tables, that and more <laughs> on Mass media day here on the field of 68 coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back to Mac Media Day here on the Field of 68. And we are now joined by Bowling Green point guard Trey Thomas. Trey, first and foremost, man, Todd was just telling us uh, you were a little bit banged up last year. How are you feeling? Are you healthy? Are you ready to uh, to kind of be back to 100% this season? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that for sure. I really spent uh, this offseason just working on my body, you know, recovering from the injury, but also like building back those muscles that I had lost last year. So I'm really excited. Um, at as close to 100 percent as i'm gonna get so i'm ready how much did it help you trade the three years of vanderbilt i know you probably didn't have uh, as much of a of a role as you would have liked there but how much did it help you now uh being in the mac it helped me a lot you know i learned from a lot of veteran guys a lot of veteran coaches you know scotty pippa jr i really like step behind, took a step behind him and just watch how he played the game how he went about his day, how, you know, just how he led as a point guard. So I learned a lot from him. And then Coach Stagg, you know, as an NBA guy, he taught us a lot. And all the assistants that we had there just taught us a lot. So I was really just a sponge there. I learned so much that, you know, I'm teaching guys today. You got nine new faces coming into the program this year. You're one of the returnees. You're one of the old guys on the roster, right? You're a fifth-year player. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you doing to try to – kind of help some of these these new additions acclimate to this level you got some freshmen you got some juco guys coming into division one for the first time like how do you how do you kind of help them get ready for college basketball in this leadership role uh you know big thing for me this summer was just being have, having a bigger voice you know lead them by you know talking to these guys telling them what to do where to go you know how to be successful not just in college but also in this program that we have uh, last year i kind of was not really used to the system, so I kind of just led by example. But this year, I feel like my voice is very powerful, and just the way I'm able to lead in a practice, whether on the defensive, offensive role, then also just lead off the court by, you know, showing guys how to schedule, you know, when to get in the gym, when not to get in the gym, you know, recovery stuff like that. So just having a bigger voice is how I'm able to help these guys this summer. You got you and Jason back as starters. Um couple more guys coming off the bench that are back but give me give me somebody because coaches won't do this but you players will generally give me somebody yeah. that's looked really good in the offseason that maybe people don't know about but they will soon uh somebody that's i mean we got a lot of guys i'm gonna give you a couple i'm gonna give you a, i'm okay. gonna give you about three i'm gonna give you three uh, Marcus, look, he's he's been looking real good this summer, and I, I don't think people really know his story and you know what he's done in the past. So Marcus, for sure. Uh, I say Yo Yo, you know he didn't really play that much at Michigan, and he's had a great summer as well. And someone that's recently came back and you know been playing great in practice is Javante. You know people don't really know much about him. He's a real quiet guy, you know just goes about his day. But 
I feel like this season people are going to know who he is for sure. Uh, talk to us about Yo-Yo because he was a guy that came in with a certain level of expectation because of some of the stuff that he did, um, you know, internationally before he got to Michigan. It obviously didn't really work out there, but he was uh, playing with the national team again over the summer. We saw some highlights from that. Um, what can Bowling Green fans expect out of uh, a guy with, look, 6'9", with that skill set? He's, uh, he's a talented player. Yeah, yo is a great player. You know, great score, score at will. You know, and he's a competitor. He's going to go at it every day, every game we have. You know, he's whether he's banged up, not banged up, he's going to go at it. He's not going to shy down. You know, he's always in the gym getting shots up. So you're just going to expect a competitor that can score the ball and can also guard. You know, he's made leaps and bounds this summer, not just in, you know, the guarding the ball, but, you know, having a bigger voice as well, even as a new guy coming in. You know, he's trying to lead younger guys as well. So competitor that can score the ball, leader, he's going to do it all for us. All right, you're, you're a Canadian. Uh, there have been a lot of really, really good players that have come from Canada yeah. lately. Uh, yep. Give me, give me the best Canadian basketball player right now. Uh, I yeah. think I know what you're going to say, but like, I mean, to me, again, I, I first watched it like 20, 25 years ago. They started coming over. Uh, prep schools got big uh, in Canada, and now it's kind of taken over uh, with the NBA. Who's your guy? Uh, I'd say Shea Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's really good. Why? Why? He's Break really down his game. What do you like about him? Uh, just the way he plays at his own speed. You know, he never gets sped up. He can score the ball. I mean, last year he averaged thirty, but probably shouldn't one three a game, and that's kind of hard in twenty twenty four. You know, the type of basketball that's being played right now. But you know, just the way he's able to play at his own pace, score the ball, and then he plays defense as well. I'm pretty sure he was leading the league last year for a little bit in steel. So a two-way player like average 30 with no threes is it's exciting. All right. Last thing I got for you. Um, if if we look up in February and Bowling Green is first place, second place in the MAC, competing for a conference championship, looking at getting 20 wins again, what's the, the most important thing that has to happen for you guys? What's the biggest thing? I just feel like we got to buy into winning. You know, we got a whole lot of talented players, and I feel like on teams I had in the past with a lot of talented players, you know, there were a couple guys that were, like, on their own schedule. They just wanted to get theirs and stuff like that. But, you know, I feel like if this team that we have this year just keeps winning the main thing and, you know, just focuses on everybody. I feel like everybody has the same goal at hand, so just focuses on winning. I feel like we could definitely get it done. Well, listen, Trey, we appreciate you being here. Uh, glad that you're healthy, and we're excited to see what you're going to be able to do now that you're operating at 100%. Best of luck this season. We'll be back with more 